Where should you hang your un on a 49 to 1 antenna? Can you actually trust the POTA map to tell you the park boundaries when doing a POTA activation? Can dipoles be directional? Let's find out this time on Mailbag Monday. You're watching KMRD Radio Stuff. Guys, if you got a question related to amateur radio, shoot me an email, kmrd at icloud.com. Just put in the subject Mailbag Monday, and maybe you will be featured on Mailbag Monday. Let's dive right into it. First question is talking about something that is very near and dear to me, NFED Halfwave Antennas. This viewer writes, I just recently finished my NFED Halfwave kit, which is a 49 to 1 unun from ARRL. Congratulations. My shack is on the second floor. That is awesome. Uh, my question is, does the unun have to be placed closer to the ground or can you run it horizontally? Thanks, Mike. Love the show. Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? So I have done just about everything possible with an unun within reason. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the map here in a second. The short answer is it really doesn't matter. Get your antenna up. You're in a good position on the second floor, though. Uh, if you can just mount the feed point kind of right on the eaves of the of the house or I don't know what your situation is, maybe you're in an apartment, but uh, and then run it just kind of horizontally out to a tree or maybe even sloping. If you can get the end of it up even higher, that's better. But uh, I've really found that it doesn't make that much of a difference. Now, if you modeled this on some software, would you see some different radiating patterns? I'm sure you would, but let's take a look. I'm gonna show you the map of two different activations I did. And uh, this first one is an activation that I did at Huntsville State Park. And typically when I run my NFED half waves, I usually put the feed point in a tree. It's, you know, usually four to five, maybe six feet off the ground, just depending on uh, where I can tie it to a branch. And this is the typical kind of radiating pattern or, or get outedness, if you will, that I get. A lot of East Coast stations, kind of the eastern half of the country and some West Coast. We've seen this a lot uh, in, in the videos that I've posted this map. And, you know, I pretty much know what to expect. Now, uh, just over the weekend, I was southwest of Dallas at a park called Dinosaur Valley State Park. And I just... I was hiking through the woods, and, and I, when I finally got time to get on the air, I was just, let's put up the antenna in the easiest and fastest configuration we can. So I unlinked my pac and NFED half wave. I just used the 20 meter section and uh, hoisted it up with the, uh, with the DX Commander mast. And the Unun was literally on the ground, and it was running as a vertical. This is the radiating pattern I got in that configuration. Again, the Unun is literally on the ground. And here again, we see a very similar radiating pattern. I'm eh, about 170 miles north of where I live. And again, you can see most of the contacts are on the east half of the country. Some are on the west coast of the country. But we even got all the way up to Alaska. That was Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, so it really just doesn't matter. And, and even in terms of like direction, whether it's, whether it's radiating east and west or north and south, kind of doesn't matter so much. Get your antenna in the air and get on the air. And don't fuss too much with where it is. As long as your SWR is okay, that's really all that matters. Get on the air, have fun. But awesome question. Thanks for writing in. Appreciate it. Next, can you trust the POTA map? I've looked all over the POTA website to see where you can find information on the boundaries of a POTA location. The only thing I found that was close was by going to the map page and clicking on the yellow indicator for the park. That brought up a reference page that gives information like reference number, blah, blah, blah. But nowhere does there appear to be any indication of boundaries. How does an activator find that information? So this is a really good question. And it's not quite as uh, night and day as you would expect it to be. So let's take a look at the POTA map first. And here we can see uh, we're looking at you can see the blue little arrow over the yellow dot. That's indicating Sam Houston National Forest. Now, if you look at kind of the, the whole center of this map that's kind of greenish, that's what the Parks on the Air website or the, or the POTA map says is Sam Houston National Forest. So all the way from Lake Livingston on your right, all the way down to Lake Conroe on your left, and everywhere in between, all that kind of greenish hue says is Sam Houston National Forest. Now, Sam Houston is a big frickin' forest, but that is not what Sam Houston National Forest looks like. What you really need to do is find an actual map of the forest or the park or wherever you're going, and that's gonna give you the detailed look 
uh, or, or view of where you're going. So this is actually the map of Sam Houston National Forest. All those kind of beige-ish colors, those are the forest boundaries, not the entire area encompassing hundreds of square miles where I live. So you can see Lake Conroe there. Yeah, it's around Lake Conroe. You can see at the top Huntsville. It's not in Huntsville. It is a little bit east of me. It is a little bit south of me. Uh, and you can actually see that uh, Huntsville State Park, the yellow dot to the left, looks like it's inside of Sam Houston National Forest. So if you were to just look at this, you would think that if that all of the times that I've activated Huntsville State Park, that's actually a twofer, when in fact it is not. Sam uh, Huntsville State Park is nowhere in Sam Houston National Forest. They don't overlap. They 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 do touch. Their boundaries connect, but they don't ever overlap. So there's no place where that's a twofer. So always check the actual park map. You can pull up Google Maps on your GPS and see where you are and make sure you're within the boundaries. Uh, oftentimes, you'll kind of just know by going there. For example, there is Sam Houston National Forest is along the freeway along I-45, and there's a trailhead that I can actually park my car into that is maybe a quarter mile away from the entrance to Sam uh, to uh, Huntsville State Park. So I can activate both of them within a couple of minutes, but they are not a twofer. So always check the actual park website or go to the, the ranger station, get a map and make sure you're within the park boundary. So that is a very, very good question. And one that I'm sure a lot of people would get confused at, because if you're just looking at the POTA map, you'd think, well, this whole darn area is Sam Houston National Forest. And that is simply not the case. Last, we've got a great question about directionality of dipoles. This viewer is writing, question, if you took two dipoles and hung one going east and west and one going north and south, could you get some form of directionality? I know it wouldn't be like a beam or a yagi, but still, just thinking, might be something to experiment with using a, a whisper. Well, it just so happens that I do have two antennas above my house. I have a Nelson antenna, 49 to 1, 80 meter antenna that is radiating east and west. And I have a 10 antennas, 49 to 1, 80 meter antenna that is radiating north and south. So I get to play with this every day. And I'll tell you just quickly, yes, it does matter. How much? Eh, some. Not as much as you'd think. So I did do some whisper testing. Let's take a look at the results. So I did two transmissions on Whisper, back to back, so two two minute transmissions. Uh, this first one is on the Nelson antennas radiating east and west. And here you can see the radiating pattern. We got all the way to Hawaii. We got all the way down to Costa Rica. We got up to uh, Alberta, Canada. And again, mostly east coast, some west coast, uh, some couple Florida stations. That's what it looks like radiating east and west. This one is radiating north and south. So you can see, eh, there's some bit of difference. Actually, it looks like we picked up a couple more West Coast stations, a little bit more. Uh, we can see that VE3 PRO, uh, kind of where uh, Ontario is. So we are getting more stations to the north. Uh, I did the test earlier today. I actually ended up picking up uh, uh, Australia with the north and south radiating element. So yeah, I mean, sure as day, you absolutely do hear different signals. Again, this is east and west. This is north and south. And the band condition is pretty good today. The flux is uh, 118. We've got an A index of 5 and a K index of 1. So very good for propagation today. This is whisper. you got to take this with a grain of salt. When I'm sitting on my front porch, I'm on the 10 tennis that's radiating north and south. And uh, sometimes I'll be hunting Poda and I'll, I'll see a station uh, that's spotted somewhere and I can't hear them on the east and west or excuse me the north and south antenna so I'll run inside where I'm sitting right now and get on the uh, the Nelson antenna radiating east and west and I can hear them so that's really the the reality of it uh, does it matter not a whole heck of a lot but to some degree now one thing I do want to show you my friend Jason N5NU is possibly as big if not bigger an antenna nerd that I am and he moved to Costa Rica, but before he did, uh, he brought out a little wire beam antenna that he made. He sent me some pictures. It's kind of hard to see, but this thing's cool. I actually got a chance to use this, and uh, this is it. You can see the bottom. There's, a, a, there's two pieces of PVC, one here at the bottom and one way up in the trees that you can't see, but there's two wires, 
One is a uh, driven element and the other is a reflector. And he's got this thing just running as a sloper, like so haphazardly <laughs> put up. This is at Huntsville State Park at my usual uh, stomping grounds. And we got on the air and we pointed this thing west and sure as day, we're getting a lot more West Coast stations. It was pretty cool. Here's another picture of it. Uh, I know it's hard to see the wires, but it's it's just a really cool antenna. I think he's feeding it with a uh, and one of those LDG, uh, either the uh, either a one to one balance or a nine to one. I, I forget what kind of transformer he was using, but he was feeding it with in the center with some kind of uh, LDG balance. Blow him up on on uh, email. Look him up on QRZ, and he can probably tell you all about it. I don't know all the details, but that is a way to get a directional dipole because that's really all it is. It's a dipole with a reflector behind it. And I was amazed, it actually worked. So very, very cool. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. Always up for experimenting with antennas and I would encourage you guys to as well because there's, you know, we, we can model things, we can talk about things, we can make things. All of that doesn't amount to a can of Frank's beans unless we actually get on the air and do the experimenting ourselves and find out for ourselves. So anyway, that's all I got. Like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at KMRD, and we will see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.